Hello, welcome to BBC News. I'm Rich Preston. Our top stories. No survivors, but Sunday's fatal plane crash in Nepal raises a raft of questions. The pilot allegedly didn't report any problems on the approach. Hundreds of police officers are continuing their work here. They've given up hope on finding any survivors, but now as they pick through the wreckage, they're trying to find clues to work out how this tragedy happened. A former commander in the Russian paramilitary organization Wagner has claimed asylum in Norway after deserting the mercenary group. Police in Romania say they're widening their investigation into the social media influencer Andrew Tate, who's facing charges of human trafficking and rape. Andrew Mur Andy Murray will be on court shortly at the Australian Open in Melbourne. Novak Djokovic starts his bid for the championship later on Tuesday. And the Italian movie icon Gina Lola Brigida has died at the age of 95. Hello and welcome to our viewers on PBS in the United States and around the world. We begin in South Asia and rescuers in Nepal have recovered two more bodies from the site of Sunday's plane crash. They say they don't expect to find any more survivors. 72 people from at least nine countries were on board Yeti Airlines Flight 691. A British man, Ryan Callum Crichton, is one of the latest victims to be named. The plane was on an internal flight from the capital Kathmandu to the tourist town of Pokhara when it crashed just before landing. Our South Asia correspondent Regini Vaidyanathan sent this report from the scene. Stephanie, thank you. Well, let's take a look at some other stories in our headlines just now. The UK <laughs> government says it will block a law passed in Scotland that makes it easier for people to change their legal gender, saying it will conflict with UK-wide equality laws. It's the first time the government in Westminster has blocked a bill passed in Scotland and the move's been branded a full frontal attack on the Scottish Parliament by Scotland's First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, who says they will appeal. The Attorney General's office in Brazil has filed an indictment against 39 people for their alleged involvement in coup activities related to the storming of Brazil's Senate building. The indictment says they were among a core group of conspirators who tried to abolish the democratic order. The former President Jair Bolsonaro denies instigating the violence. Thousands of Iranians living in Europe have demonstrated outside the EU Parliament demanding that Iran's Revolutionary Guard is listed as a terrorist group. They accuse the guards of playing a key role in suppressing anti-government protests that have occurred across Iran since the death in custody of Masa Amini in September. Now, police in Romania say they're expanding their investigation into the social media influencer Andrew Tate. They've seized a fleet of luxury cars from Mr. Tate's compound in Bucharest and raided seven more properties. The 36-year-old British-American citizen has been detained as part of an investigation into allegations of human trafficking and rape along with his brother. Both men deny all the allegations made against them. Lucy Williamson sent this report from Bucharest. Do stick with us here on BBC News. Still to come, Italy's most wanted mafia boss is finally under arrest after 30 years on the run. Hello there, you're watching BBC News, our top stories this hour. No survivors, but Sunday's fatal plane crash in Nepal raises a raft of questions. The pilot allegedly didn't report any problems on the approach. And a former commander in the Russian paramilitary organization, the Wagner Group, has claimed asylum in Norway after deserting the mercenary organization. 
Now it's the second day of the Australian Open in Melbourne where it's just coming up to quarter past one in the afternoon on Tuesday and the day that fans of some of tennis's biggest stars have been eagerly awaiting. None more so than the fans of Novak Djokovic who's returning to the competition for the first time since being deported from Australia because he wasn't vaccinated against COVID-19. Well we can turn now to the BBC's Shaima Khalil who's joining us from Melbourne. Now uh, Shaima let's talk first of all about Andy Murray. He's due on court in well, about a quarter of an hour from now. Gina Lola Brigida, who's died at the age of 95. And there's much more on all those stories on the BBC News website. You can head to bbc.com slash news or of course you can download the BBC News app. That's it from us here in London. Thanks very much for your company. From all of us, we appreciate you watching and we will see you next time. Bye bye for now. Hello there, welcome to BBC News, I'm Rich Preston, our top stories. No survivors, but Sunday's fatal plane crash in Nepal raises a raft of questions. The pilot allegedly didn't report any problems on the approach. Hundreds of police officers are continuing their work here. They've given up hope on finding any survivors, but now as they pick through the wreckage, they're trying to find clues to work out how this tragedy happened. A former commander in the Russian paramilitary organisation, the Wagner Group, has claimed asylum in Norway after deserting the mercenary organisation. A royal rebuff from the Duke and Duchess of Sussex for Jeremy Clarkson, who apologised in writing for comments he made about Meghan in a newspaper column. Andy Murray will be on court shortly at the Australian Open in Melbourne. Novak Djokovic starts his bid for the championship later on Tuesday into my life like a wolf in, in snakes blocking. And the Italian life. movie icon Gina Lola Brigida has died at the age of 95. Hello there and welcome to the programme. We begin in South Asia, where rescuers in Nepal have recovered two more bodies from the site of Sunday's plane crash. They say they don't expect to find any more survivors. 72 people from at least nine countries were on board Yeti Airlines Flight 691. A British man, Ryan Callum Crichton, is one of the latest victims to be named. The plane was on an internal flight from the capital Kathmandu to the tourist town of Pokhara when it crashed just before landing. Our South Asia correspondent Regini Vaidyanathan sent this report from the scene. Do stick with us here on BBC News. Still to come, Novak Djokovic is getting ready to compete in the Australian Open a year after being banned due to his COVID vaccination status. We'll have the latest from Melbourne. Hello there, you're watching BBC News, the latest headlines. No survivors, but Sunday's fatal plane crash in Nepal raises a raft of questions. The pilot allegedly didn't report any problems on the approach. And a former commander in the Russian paramilitary organisation, the Wagner Group, has claimed asylum in Norway after deserting the mercenary organisation. Now, police in Romania say they're expanding their investigation into the social media influencer Andrew Tate. They've seized a fleet of luxury cars from Mr Tate's compound in Bucharest and raided seven more properties. The 36-year-old British-American citizen has been detained as part of an investigation into allegations of human trafficking and rape along with his brother. Both men deny all the allegations made against them. Lucy Williamson sent this report from Bucharest. Gina Lola Brigida, who's died at the age of 95. And that's it from us for now. Much more on the BBC News website. You can reach me on Twitter 
I'm at Rich Preston. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Hello there, you're watching BBC News, I'm Rich Preston, our top stories. No survivors, but Sunday's fatal plane crash in Nepal raises a raft of questions. The pilot allegedly didn't report any problems on the approach. Hundreds of police officers are continuing their work here. They've given up hope on finding any survivors, but now as they pick through the wreckage, they're trying to find clues to work out how this tragedy happened. A former commander in the Russian paramilitary organization, the Wagner Group, has claimed asylum in Norway after deserting the mercenary organization. A royal rebuff from the Duke and Duchess of Sussex for Jeremy Clarkson, who apologized in writing for comments he made about Meghan in a newspaper column. Police in Romania say they're widening their investigation into the social media influencer Andrew Tate, who's facing charges of human trafficking and rape. Andy Murray has gone on court at the Australian Open in Melbourne. Novak Djokovic starts his bid for the championship later on Tuesday. Back into my life like a wolf in, in snakes! Back and tributes pouring for the Italian movie icon Gina Lollobrigida, who's died at the age of 95. Hello there and welcome to our viewers on PBS in the United States and around the world. We begin in South Asia where rescuers in Nepal have recovered two more bodies from the site of Sunday's plane crash. They say they don't expect to find any more survivors. 72 people from at least nine countries were on board Yeti Airlines Flight 691. A British man, Ryan Callum Crichton, is one of the latest victims to be named. The plane was on an internal flight from the capital Kathmandu to the tourist town of Pokhara when it crashed just before landing. Our South Asia correspondent, Regini Vaidyanathan, sent this report from the scene. Do stick with us here on BBC News Still to Come. Novak Djokovic is getting ready to compete in the Australian Open a year after being deported over his COVID vaccination status. We'll have the latest from Melbourne. Hello there, this is BBC World News, the latest headlines. No survivors, but Sunday's fatal plane crash in Nepal raises a raft of questions. The pilot allegedly didn't report any problems on the approach. And a former commander in the Russian paramilitary organization, the Wagner Group, has claimed asylum in Norway after deserting the mercenary group. Police in Romania say they're expanding their investigation into the social media influencer Andrew Tate. They've seized a fleet of luxury cars from Mr Tate's compound in Bucharest and raided seven more properties. The 36-year-old British American citizen has been detained as part of an investigation into allegations of human trafficking and rape along with his brother. Both men deny all the allegations made against them. Lucy Williamson has this report from Bucharest. And there's much more on all those stories on the BBC News website, bbc.com slash news, or you can download the BBC News app. You can reach me. I'm on Twitter at Rich Press, and please do get in touch. From all of us on the team here in London, thanks very much for your company. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello there. We've got some strong winds on the way to parts of southern Europe. Now for Portugal, 